Hummer is back, and in a very big way. This is the all-new GMC Hummer EV SUT. It is an all-electric with three motors, a thousand horsepower, and tons of off-road ready goodies. But can it conquer our Peninsula off-road course? We're gonna find out right now on Driving Sports TV. This is, of course, the all-new GMC Hummer EV SUT. And I have to underline the SUT portion because this is the truck. There will be an SUV version later this year. What we have here is basically a showcase for GM's Ultium electric platform. This is loaded with three electric motors, air suspension, a massive battery that has up to 350 miles of range. It also has an extremely fast charging architecture. This allows this to completely recharge in about an hour. That is if you can actually find a 350 kilowatt DC fast charging system. Most of them are 150. Just by looking at it, you can probably tell this is designed for off-road adventures. And we have another video where we actually did take it on an ice road up in Eastern Washington. In this video, we're gonna look at all of the off-road features, how they work, are they any good? And do they actually make going off-road any easier? Also, is the size gonna be an issue? We're gonna find out right now. But before we hit the course, let's check out some of the more off-road focus features. First up, we have recovery points, two on the front, two on the back. We also have a big metal bash plate on the underside, which is good. These tires are meaty mud terrains from Goodyear. They are the Goodyear Wranglers and they are wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels. On the side, we have these bars. They are basically Nerf bars. They're not actual sliders, although they are attached to the frame pretty solid. Of course, we have a whole lot of battery pack down here, but it is protected against dents and dings. There are cameras all around the vehicle and also two on the underside. You can, of course, pop the tops off, but it is way too cold to do that today, which is why I'm wearing a big puffy coat. <laughs> Because this is a lifestyle truck, it has a fairly small bed. Uh, it's only about a five foot box. Even though it's not a very large bed, it is pretty practical for people, you know, who just occasionally need to haul stuff, be it dirt, um, desert toys, you know, fun stuff. We also have, of course, have a quick fold down with an extra step integrated. There we go. And this one even has the optional kicker sound system in the step, which is pretty cool. In the back here, we have a tow hitch, which is included. Uh, this will tow up to 7,500 pounds, which coincidentally is the same towing capacity as our $44,000 uh, Ford Ranger Tremor, which we bought for the show. Here are, of course, those other tow loops, but at a weight of over 9,000 pounds, if this thing gets high centered or is in a really bad situation, there's not gonna be a lot that can tow it to safety. Ah, anyway, hope we don't have to worry about that today. Those are all the key features we need to look at right now. Uh, if you wanna know more details, we have another video that features our ice road adventure, but also covers all of the individual items on this vehicle. Check that out if you wanna learn more. But now, it's time to drive. Let's see, where do we start? Well, there's a couple features that are just kind of cool. I don't know how practical they are. Well, one I know is practical, but the other one, not so sure. This is a very large vehicle, so obviously something like all-wheel steering is gonna be a huge benefit. I'm just gonna line up right here. I'm gonna turn off the rear wheel steering, so it's just front steering only. I'm gonna go into drive, crank the wheel all the way over, and then just accelerate and we'll see how tight this is. And yeah, we're gonna hit the blackberry bushes. Don't wanna do that. So I'm keeping the wheel completely cranked. So there's no advantage here. Go back to where I was. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with rear steering on. Yep, I can see those wheels turning. Go into drive and you see just how much tighter of a corner this can make. And we're gonna clear the blackberries this time. 
easy. Okay, so that's, that's a cool feature. A lot of vehicles have that though, uh, so it's not extremely unique to this one. The next feature that we're gonna look at is crab walk. Now crab walk is interesting because it turns both the front and back wheels the same direction. <laughs> that way you can keep the same angle of the vehicle while avoiding things and going around them. Um, I have found that it's a little bit flaky and engaging and also I have questions as to how it can be controlled. So we're going to do a test with that in a little bit, but first I'm just going to show you how it works. So with the wheels pointing straight, and that's important, I hold down the button that enables, disables the rear wheels, hold it down long enough, and it goes into crab walk mode. Got the cool graphic there, I have the little crab icon up there, and then basically I just steer the rear wheels, you can see them turning there, kind of, let's clean that camera. There we go. Now we can see them turning in the back. And we go forward. And now we're crab walking. It's kind of like sliding on hair left and right. It's really weird. We go forward, we can go backwards. Yeah, all, all kinds of fun. Uh, to turn it off, I just hold down the crab walk button and then it will uh, re-engage just standard uh, four-wheel steering. So those two features are kind of cool and they really show off how electric can be a little bit more innovative than a traditional gas-powered vehicle, um, crab walk especially. This does not do tank turns and I think the reason for that is A, possibly complicated, but B, uh, the Rivian, which does it, has four hub motors. This one uses three motors, uh, not individual hub motors. Oh, yeah, also, uh, we can control height. There's multiple heights differences. Uh, everything from entry-exit height to normal to increased to a fourth height, which is extract. And that is just when you need the maximum amount of height. Now, I would recommend personally driving around in increased height when you're doing off-road uh, so that way you can always give it that extra bump if you do get stuck on something. Is that good advice? I don't know but it's kind of what I do. With that uh, I want to see if crab walk is something I can actually control or is it really just kind of for show and tell and for that I'm going to put out a couple course markers. So the idea of crab walk mode is that you can have your vehicle oriented in one direction and still get around an object without having to rotate the vehicle. Uh, the demonstration video they use online shows um, somebody going through a tight canyon, for example, where you don't have the room to rotate your vehicle. So I'm gonna basically put an obstacle in front and see if I can get around it predictably. And that's the key thing for me is so far when I've tried crab walk just in an open field. It feels like I'm not really controlling where it's going, but it's kind of fun. So this will tell me whether or not it's something that's actually practical. So uh, let's see here. I'm gonna go out a few paces from the vehicle. One, two, three, four, five. So it's about 15 feet roughly. Plant a couple of these. There's one. Two, so there's a very large object right in the way of the vehicle. Okay, with those poles planted, I can see very clearly where they're at. I clearly don't want to hit them. They're roughly 15 feet away. And now I'm going to go, oh no, I got to get around those, but I can't rotate the vehicle. How will I get around them? Put it into drive, wheel straight, hold down for crab walk. Crab walk is engaged, got the logo up here. Uh, so now, I actually wanna see, make sure both wheels. So the wheels are turning. I am now turned. Can I get around them without rotating the vehicle very much? Like what's my advantage here? Okay, it did rotate the vehicle kind of more than I wanted, but let's see if I can now, oh yeah, cause now I'm just driving straight even though the vehicle 
has made that corner. Okay, so it's almost like a twofer, and now I can barely go by the obstacle. Oop, let's not hit it. Let's wait to clear it. Man, this thing's long. And now I can use crab walk to go back, and I am still oriented, pointing straight. Okay, so that actually does work, I think, in the real world. So the advantage here with crab walk is that you can approach something and go around it without changing the attitude, the angle of the vehicle. Uh, that way, if you're in a really tight canyon or something like that, when you go, you're not gonna have to be turning, 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 and then getting back into your position. You can just go up and go around and then continue on your way. It makes for more efficient off-roading. The thing you gotta watch out for though is turning the wheel too much simply because the front wheels have more range than the back wheels. Uh, so if you go too far, you're going to start rotating that front around. However, if you do just a little bit, the whole vehicle slides left and right like that. Okay, enough with crab walk, which by the way works backwards as well as forwards. <laughs> so cool. Let's re-engage those normal steering, but keeping rear wheel steering on and go to the next test. The Hummer EV being 87 inches wide, I'm a little concerned about these two trees. So we're gonna measure them and see how much room for error we have. 112 inches wide. I think it makes sense for us to have a little test before we're actually potentially sacrificing a quarter panel on the vehicle. So I'm gonna set these up to be the same width apart. You can hold that, because we wanna do about 112. Uh, there's a lot of different drive modes and they have these really cool animations. They do take a little while though. It takes a moment for the animation to kick in. So uh, I'm gonna go, see at this point, I'm just gonna do off-road. I'm gonna say yes, okay. And we're gonna go ahead and raise the vehicle up. Now I'm just going up to increase ride height. I'm not doing extract mode. Okay, now that we're at our full height, we're gonna go ahead and go into the course. I am gonna keep this in L mode to see what this feels like. Ooh, that throttle's really smooth. Yeah, I like that. Of course, this has no low range because electric motors, you don't need something like that. Oh, I like this L mode. This is nice. It's so smooth. Just the throttle's very progressive. Now, this, of course, has lockers. We're not going to use them yet. Uh, I am going to, however, turn on the front cameras because we got those two poles there representing the two trees um, from our logging climb. And to do that, I actually have to go into the menu here, which I kind of wish there was a hard button for it, but there isn't. Uh, so I click up there for cameras. Now I have a view. I can see my wheel markers. This should take us straight through those two. And then I have all these just great camera views from top down, side, ball hitch. Um, I even have front and back cameras. That back camera is looking a little dirty, so let's clean it. That's a little hazy. I kind of wonder why. I wonder if somebody scratched it up before, before I had it. So let's go ahead and move forward. Now we can see the log behind us, or in front of us. We're about to go over the log, and then we go down into the ditch. This is really cool. I love having this front view camera. You can see where the wheels are and where everything is relative. Oh man, those two trees are going to be very tight. Ooh, very tight. I'm not going to not necessarily put my wing mirrors in level of tight. Oh, sliding on the tree. See, that actually is a great example of something that we need to look out for because even though it's pretty tight, it's not like you're on a paved road. You can have some slide left to right that can be problematic. Is that going to continue to be problematic back there? Oof. Now, if I wanted to avoid that whole kind of sliding thing, I could have probably locked differential but don't really need to here up and over and we have enough clearance even with this really long wheelbase okay and wheelbase really can change everything because uh, it really varies where your wheels sit on the ground now we're going to see just how maneuverable this thing is in our really tight uh, hill climb and logging road courses Can we even get in? <laughs> this is absolutely the biggest thing we've taken back here. 
Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is the hill climb. And the hill climb is mostly a challenge for the tire, more so than I would even say the vehicle. Uh, but these are mud terrains, so it should have no huge issue getting up it. Of course, there is a little bit of a tightness on that turn at the top, so hopefully we'll do okay. Of course, there's also a tightness to the turn right here as well. Hmm. Let's see with this all-wheel steering if we can get around. Oh yeah, all-wheel steering is the real deal, that's for sure. Oh yeah, love that. For as big as this thing is, it really handles well. Okay, so this is a very steep climb. It's covered in mud and there's a couple cross cuts on it. You know, fun. <laughs> now we are at, what is it? We're at the increased ride height. I'm in off-road mode and here we go. Now the pitch is at 10 degrees, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 70, 18. And I have full throttle on and we are just digging. So this time we're gonna kind of approach it, still fairly slow, but we're gonna go a little bit quicker. And I'm going to put on the rear locker. Rear locker, you gonna engage? Okay, rear locker engaged. And now let's see what this does. Okay, even worse now that we've greased up the surface. The thing about mud is that it's an ever-changing surface. As you spin your wheels, you kind of create more of a challenge. So at this point, I'm just going to go all in with front and rear lockers. Oop, this is not turning on. I don't know why I'm not getting front and rears. Huh. Well, let's give it a try. I'm going to put the transmission back into low before I had it on just regular. And here we go. I'm showing that my rear locker is engaged. We're just gonna go forward. This is, keep in mind, this is 9,000 plus pounds. Okay, we're gonna, we're at an 18 degree pitch and we're just gonna have to gun it, I think. We're just creating massive trenches, I think. Uh, yeah, those are pretty big trenches. Okay, let's do it. Engage, three, two, one, go. Come on, you got this, you got this, yes! I mean, I knew it would get up there, I just I wasn't sure how much we'd really have to commit to that. Ah, but it did just fine. <laughs> I mean, we haven't been on this hill because I've been waiting for the water to, to stop raining, basically, and it hasn't. We can tell that it's really rutted, very deep, very, very slimy still. Uh, but I think that did just fine. You know, once you start spinning the tires, it flings the mud off, it gives you a little bit more grip, and we climbed up no problem. Um, I just wasn't able to crawl up it, but that's not your usual approach to mud anyway. I just wanted to see what the angle was. Okay, well, let's move on and check out its articulation. So right here, we're gonna test out the articulation of the vehicle. We have a couple really deep ditches. Uh, the first one is shallow, and the second one is very deep. This hood is massive. Okay, let's change the camera view. I keep forgetting I have all these cameras here. We'll dip down into a hole, but it's the second one that's the really deep hole. And that'll really test out the articulation of this vehicle as we come out and over it. Also testing its ability to push power around too. Whoa, whoa. You can see the wheel, the back wheel in the hole there. Straight it out, push that power forward. I am flooring it and it is just barely inching. Ooh. I guess we scraped on the dirt there. Man, this thing is so much weight. It just smushes everything. So you gotta keep in mind too, this thing is so heavy, you almost have to rethink your approaches to thing because some things which aren't a problem at all on a lighter vehicle just become phenomenally difficult with this one simply because it's so heavy. Line up here for the logging road. Now this is covered in four by eight rocks. It has a couple boulders in the way. Uh, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge mostly because of width. 
Now this vehicle, not only is it big, but now that I'm in terrain mode, I have extremely aggressive rear wheel steering, which helps me navigate these really tight objects. Oh my gosh, sitting behind the seat on this thing with this in front of me is kind of a little nerve wracking because even though this has a lot of off-road capability, it has great ground clearance, it has a pretty incredible four-wheel drive mode, uh, <laughs> I have concerns. My concerns are obviously width is an issue, but also that I'm gonna shunt to the side and because of the width of this, I'm gonna have very little room uh, for sliding. So uh, rear locker is on. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm in terrain mode. We're gonna do the most aggressive terrain mode. Turn that camera off. Make sure we're in terrain, which is for challenging stuff. Turn those cameras back on so I can see my wheel placement. And it's funny, like terrain mode is no joke. I slightly accelerate and it crawls slower than anything I've ever driven. The crawl ratio on this thing is nuts. So I'm very close to all objects here. I'm gonna go ahead and poke my mirrors in just because it makes me a little nervous. <laughs> oh boy. As we continue, now there is a little tree stump that I'm a little nervous about. That if I slide, I might hit something. So I really hope I don't slide. We're gonna articulate. I'm gonna actually try to straddle that boulder there. I'm just doing it slow because I don't want to fast shunt. Is it gonna get me up and over? It is. Okay. Oh man, this is so tight. I don't know if I'll ever do this again. <laughs> okay, now I want to put my wing mirrors out so I can check my clearances. I just hit that pole, which the pole is a guideline for how much width I have. Oh, oh man, that is really tight. Yeah, swing it away from the tree. And out we go, hopefully. We're going to the ditch lifting a wheel possibly as we're trying to move forward. Whew. And then once I get over this final obstacle, I can turn and we are clear. Yes. Now that our time with the Hummer EV SUT is coming to an end, I had some extra thoughts that I really wanted to share, but they didn't really fit into the narrative of either our ice road or our off-road videos. So I'm just going to sit here and tell you my thoughts. First off, really enjoyed this truck. It looks ridiculous. When I saw it on paper, I'm like, that thing is absurd, it's stupid, it makes no sense whatsoever. However, if you look at it from the perspective of a rolling platform technology demonstration for the Ultium battery tech, it's actually pretty good. Um, it does look ridiculous and it makes a statement. And yes, people will stop and talk to you. So if you don't like people, this is not the vehicle to buy. So outside people attacking you wherever you go because they want to know more about it, what's it really like living with this thing? Well, it's not bad, but you can't treat it like a normal truck. And the problem with that isn't really with the truck, it's the infrastructure. We have a normal charging spot that we go to. It's a DC fast charge, a 350 kilowatt. Uh, it's a really high speed charging location in Ellensburg. We've used it a lot. So after our adventure, we were down to about 80 miles of range, 86 miles of range by the time we got back to Ellensburg and we went to go plug in. Unfortunately, Electrify America had completely removed the station, put in a brand new one, and nothing was turned on. That was the only DC fast charge station from any make, any brand, within like 40 miles. There was nothing else. We had no choice. So the closest station the way we wanted to go was North Bend and the North Bend station was 80 miles away. Six miles does not fill me with confidence, especially when going over a mountain pass because obviously you use a lot more power going up. You use less going down, but it isn't always a wash. So basically we had to go 37 miles out of our way to Yakima to charge this up just to be able to make it home. 
And so that's my biggest issue, I think, with just the electric lifestyle. It's not really the, the vehicles. The vehicles are getting very, very good. And if you're charging from home and you're staying within a one charge zone, no problem. The issue I have is that the companies that make these charging sites are not serious businesses. It should be treated as critical infrastructure. Instead, they treat them like a whim. Open, closed, work, doesn't, don't care is usually the response. So I have to give, you know, props to GMC for building a pretty cool vehicle, but the infrastructure has to change and it's gonna take the manufacturers getting on board because clearly it's not happening otherwise. Tesla, I have a lot of things that I don't like about Tesla, but their charging infrastructure is second to none. Absolutely the best. Well, okay, well you didn't watch this video to hear me bitch about charging infrastructure. Although maybe you did. It seems to be a common refrain with EV reviews. After the off-road course, the one thing I do know about this, and I, I know why my friend Roman bought one of these, is because one week is not enough time to learn the ins and the outs. You, you're relearning off-roading with a vehicle like this. And it's simply because it has so many unique features that we haven't experienced before. So like when I get into a 4Runner or a Land Cruiser or a Jeep Wrangler uh, or an old Pathfinder, old Pathfinder, not the new one, the new one's a minivan basically, they all basically act and react the same. When you put them into four low, you have locked front and back, you have lockers, that all works. It all acts and reacts the same. When you're in this vehicle, you got to relearn all that because you have four wheel steering, which changes dramatically based on your drive mode. You have the throttle, which isn't a traditional throttle. When you're in terrain mode, it is very slow, like you want it. When you lift, it breaks. When you turn the wheel, it's extreme. I mean, it's, it is so incredibly different. You need to drive one of these every day. So the thing I would say, if, you, if somebody does buy one of these and you are an experienced off-roader, don't try the hard stuff first. Go do some simple stuff to make sure that you get used to how this thing works, because it is very different. Also, if you're going off the beaten path, make sure that your charging station is still there, even if you were just there a few weeks ago which is kind of a shame that we have to even say that, but because in this day and age with so many EVs, you would think that, oh, you know, these things are critical infrastructure, but they're not. So those are my thoughts on this. I actually had a great time with this vehicle. I hope we get it again when we get the SUV version because I'm actually really interested in that one. Yes, it's ridiculous. Yes, it's awesome. And that's the end of my review. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. I make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them. And now it's time to go charge this thing at the local charging station, which is 20 miles away. Uh, I don't have a level two charger at my house yet. It's not as easy as it seems. I'd love to put one in, but I physically don't have a place to put one yet in the future. Okay, well, that is the constant conundrum of an EV driver, isn't it?